Hey there YouTube, uh, long time no see on the uh, actual bike stuff, uh, mostly rants lately just because it's just been too damn cold. Uh, it's a wonderful 35 degrees out here so I figured I'd brave the garage and the outdoors a little bit to show you something I'm working on. Um, so you know if you watch my video about the problems I had with e-bikes a lot of the issues had to do with uh, bicycle tires and how flimsy they are and how I couldn't find one that was tough enough to fit in a 26 inch or 24 or seven, even 700 C wheel and decided that going to motorcycle tires was the only way to continue to ride here in this area which is absolutely full of goat heads so spent uh, you know a good three years uh, looking for the right frame that fit uh, an adult rider and also had 20 inch wheels and realized that was uh, quite difficult so uh, in my research I found that there's uh, a lot of semi recumbent bicycles that take a 20 inch rear wheel uh, and I stumbled upon one that had full suspension and I got super excited uh, but it had been discontinued so the only way to get one is to go on to eBay and you know hope that somebody has one for sale so I found somebody that had one for sale and here it is so this is a Cannondale Easy Rider also known as a Cannondale Bent it was produced in the early to mid 2000s um, and uh, and I find it to be quite a charming, amazing little bike. Um, one thing that I had sort of had reservations about was, you know, I had never ridden a bike like this before in my whole life, and I was concerned that it would be uh, not all that stable when you're, um, you know, when you're riding at a high speeds like I need to do here in Utah. Uh, it turns out that this is actually a very stable bike. Uh, when it's not stable, uh, it's usually from zero to five miles per hour because you cannot use your upper body strength to sort of uh, shift the weight of the bike uh, but once you get a pass past about five miles per hour or so um, it's pretty much like riding another uh, upright bike although it is a uh, it does take a little bit getting used to the steering it and uh, feeling a little more steady um, but I found it to be uh, not as unnerving as I thought it was going to be and I I'm going to go through with the plan to build this to do about 45 miles per hour and maybe a little bit more for sort of a um, speed test to see you know exactly how aerodynamic this is and you know um, you know can I go 60 miles per hour on uh, 2000 watts I mean it's it might be possible so it would be an interesting experiment uh, for the time being I just have this uh, easy motor which is kind of a clone of a Mac but it's uh, it's actually got a smaller stator so it's maybe only rated for about 750 watts and um, you know it, it was adequate to get the bike up to about 32 miles per hour or so just for a test to see how a chassis like this responds to higher speeds um, I've got a Midas MT MC2 tire here it's a 16 times 2.25 as you can see I obviously need a much wider rim so the future motor will have a much wider rim and be a little more proper this is like a high long uh, Samsung 32 or 30 Q pack, uh, 14 amp hours, uh, about 48 volts, nothing special. Unfortunately, um, I cannot manage to max out this motor with this battery pack. This battery pack is a huge limit factor for, for this, so I haven't tried uh, fire, faster speeds and phase advance and things like that. Um, we've got a Falk shock over here and then the standard Canon head shock over there. And I got a little hookworm. <laughs> they actually make that in clown bicycle size. <laughs> uh, it's a 16 by uh, 1.95, which, you know, don't get thrown off because this is a 16 in motorcycle size, which is actually in bicycle size, this is 20. In motorcycle size, that's actually a 12 inch tire as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the ratings are very different. So that's a 16, this is a 20, but this is a 16. <laughs> Makes sense? <laughs> um, I've got uh, your standard issue uh, BMX handlebar that I like to put on pretty much everything. This is the crappy shifter that came with the bike. Uh, I guess it was stock and then it just got beat up over the years. Uh, I eliminated the rear shifter because uh, eventually I'm going to get a gear ratio that matches the top speed of the future motor and I'll have no need for that. The gears will fully cover the range of speeds I'm going to be traveling at. Um, and other than that, you know, it's pretty much like uh, any other build, you know, standard uh, psychoanalyst I've had for the last five years, you know, a little damage and 
whatnot, and I got a cheap mirror so that I could, instead of sort of tilting my head over you know, backwards to see what's going on behind me, I can see it instantly, and you can tell that's a pretty strong unit because it's being used to hold the bike up, so uh, go $15 Amazon mirror, right? Um, one thing I noticed about this bike is that it actually puts you in the same position as if you were driving a uh, sort of mid-sized car, so when you're sitting on this, um, your head's uh, maybe maybe right here or so, and actually it's very easy to get seen. Uh, in addition to that, you know, it's such a bizarre looking machine that um, people are uh, staring at you left and right, and you have no issue with uh, being seen by motorists and whatnot, uh, unlike on maybe a, a, re a full recumbent bike where, uh, you know, it's very easy to miss you. Um, this is a... This is a pretty nice uh, compromise. Um, so, one thing I noticed with this is that you know there there is a sizable aerodynamic advantage. Um, on a on a Mack motor at 30 miles per hour, I would be using about 1,100 watts or, or such, um, and on this I'm using about 800 watts. So that's pretty dang impressive. But actually, the watts uh, at that speed should be a lot lower, and there's an interesting reason for this. So a uh, geared motor like this uses uh, three little planetary gears to reduce down to sort of like a five to one reduction ratio internally. Um, and uh, no matter no matter what you're doing, if you're if you got like a really high lot load on the motor, or you're just you know using a couple hundred watts while you're pedaling, there's always like this gear drag that that can dominate the load at lower speeds. So if I'm going like uh, 25 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour is uh, something like 100 watts is being used to just uh, spin those gears around. It seems like the efficiency is uh, particularly low, even considering I'm on an aerodynamically advantaged bicycle. But uh, I looked at it on the ebikes.ca sim, and it, it looks like I should be using more like 650 or 700 watts, but I've, I've got the disadvantage of you know those gears spinning about 25% faster than what they were designed to do you know for a 26 inch wheel and it's just it's kind of a mess um although it is really nice to uh to have a geared motor in a bike like this um i'm gonna have to go direct drive so yeah uh one really interesting thing about the aerodynamic advantage of these is that it's it's very noticeable as you're just pedaling around uh, my top speed is around like 21 22 miles per hour um and uh, it's a funny thing is I was on this bike path right I, I had my motor hooked up and I was just kind of doing some range tests and uh, I came across this guy wearing um, like a sort of like a racing jersey you know and spandex and all those uh, beautiful things that uh, like <laughs> road bike riders like to wear wear and um, I uh, didn't want to insult the guy so I uh, took my hand off the throttle and I just pedaled and uh, I passed the guy doing about 20 miles per hour up the slight incline and I, I, I think he might have been doing 16 or 17 up that incline and I was really shocked that the fact that you know even on pedal power this thing is significantly faster than a guy on a very expensive carbon fiber bicycle so um, I sort of uh, became a, a religious adherent to this style of bike after that you know um, yeah, so uh, it's it's a very comfortable ride, and uh, it's it's a lot like uh, riding a car. I I, um, I, I plan on uh, uh, fitting it with a garage door opener and uh, maybe cup holder and some kind of storage, so that uh, you know it's it's got some car comforts. And in addition, I'm I'm still kind of in the process of figuring out how to mount some some kind of uh, pack back here so that I can carry tools and a spare inner tube and things like that and water. Um, but yeah, this build is uh, shaping up to be pretty exciting already, uh, even on this uh, low amount of power uh, so far. Um, the only thing that really sucks is that I'm getting a, a major surgery for uh, tibial torsion correction in, uh, in actually a couple weeks. So um, I might not be able to get this thing finished by that time and I might be down for quite a few months healing up from basically my leg being cut in half and bolted on into the correct biomechanical position so um, yeah you might not see uh, a lot of uh, cool e-bike stuff from, from me for a while
but uh, I'm going to try to at least publish some relevant videos or maybe even just some rants and, and eventually get this thing on the road. Um, uh, one, one really neat thing about this is that uh, if you've had a leg surgery or something like that, the, uh, you know, you can at least like your hips are, are kind of offloaded and your back's offloaded. So whatever uh, cranky pains you're going through, uh, you know, from, from about here to, to end up are uh, not such an issue. So this is a really good bike to recover from a surgery on since you don't really have to balance yourself so much. So, um, you know, one thing, uh, when I was looking for information on semi-recumbents online, uh, I came across a lot of road bikers like dogging on this thing and uh, a lot of people talking about how dorky um, this style of bicycle is. And I, you know, when I look at a bike like this, I just really don't see that. I mean, I know it does look kind of like a gigantic uh, 80s hair metal guitar with wheels on it <laughs> and, a, and a bizarre seat, but, you know, really it's a um, it's, uh, extremely comfortable bicycle. It rides really well. It goes really fast. And if, you know, anyone who thinks that it's dorky is uh, really missing out on a lot of things. And, you know, maybe, maybe being a bit of a dork isn't a bad thing. So uh, if you're, you know, if you're building an electric bicycle and you had the same kind of um, tire issues that I've had, you might want to consider one of these because uh, almost all these will take a very wide uh, motorcycle slash scooter type tire. A lot of them come with 20 inch wheels. Uh, there's even, uh, occasionally you'll get one of these that pop up on eBay. I mean, I, I spent only $600 on this thing and it was up there for like a month uh, with nobody bidding on it. So. Um, if you can't find one of these, there's always the Max Aria Ray 2, uh, which costs about maybe a thousand dollars, brand new, and it has uh, it has like the kind of beefy rear suspension, but it doesn't have front suspension. But um, in my experience, the what goes on with the front wheel is not all that important, because uh, you've got so much of your weight on the back wheel and the front wheel. You know, you stick the chromoly fork on it and forget it. I mean, it's it's not a big concern. Um, you could easily build, you know, really fast, uh, long range machine with, uh, with this kind of aerodynamic advantage. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, that's it for now. And, um, uh, I'm going to go under the knife in a couple weeks and, <laughs> you know, maybe I'll be silent. Maybe I'll put some rants up and, and, uh, I'll be working on some, uh, e-bike related, uh, media outlet, uh, probably in that time, uh, that I'll reveal a little bit more about later. Um, so uh, you know, hopefully uh, we can get some some riding in around this time of year if uh, the Earth decides to bless you with a sunny day that's maybe over 35 degrees or <laughs> so. All right, man. Well, hey, you guys have a good one, and uh, I will chat with you later.